Hello everyone, we are doing module 1, Introduction to Parallel Architectures. This is lecture number 6, here we are uh, going to see at two laws which are very important uh, for assessing computer architecture. The two laws are Amdahl's law and Gustafson's law. Okay. In the previous lecture we have seen speed up, so speed up was how does a machine perform with respect to a reference machine. So, with respect to a reference machine, what improvement did we get? Now, if uh, I want to talk about speed up of a multi-core. So, speed up of a multi-core is uh, my reference machine is a single core machine and when I replace a single core machine with a multi-core machine, how much speed up do we get? So, the slide shows that the speed up on this machine is T1 by Tn where T1 is the execution time on a single core system divided by the time taken on a machine having n cores Tn. Okay. So, speed up is time taken on a single core divided by time taken on n core system. So, what do you think which value will be bigger? Would a single core system's time will be more than uh, Tn? Yes, correct. So, T1 is always going to be greater than Tn because on a multi-core I can run the same program, exploit some parallelism and have smaller execution time. So, if I take this ratio, this ratio will be always greater than 1. So, the speed up when I am using n cores is always greater than or equal to 1. We also define another term called efficiency. So, efficiency is how useful my n cores were. So, speed up we got on uh, by using n cores and we divide this by n because the max value we can get is n as we have n processors we can do as good as n. So, efficiency is speed up I obtain divided by n and what do you think this fraction would look like? What will be the value of this fraction? This fraction's max value will be equal to 1. Okay? So, the efficiency of my system can be as max as equal to 1. All right. The speed up on a multi core can be maximum n and we do the execution time on a single core divided by execution time on a multi core. All right. So, what is Amdahl's law? So, Gene Amdahl in 1967 defined this law. What he observed is uh, when we add n processors to the system, we may or may not get n times speed up. And why does this happen? Because I have a sequential or a serial program or a big program which I was running on a single core machine. This program we want to now migrate to a multi core system. But every program cannot be starting in parallel. We cannot just cut the program into small pieces which will immediately start executing. You have some portion which is sequential. For example, you want to read the data there is some calculation, some control logic, uh, you have to write the results, communicate information between one segment of the program to the other. So, th there is a significant portion in the program which is sequential which cannot be broken into pieces. Okay? So, I can divide a program into a fraction that is sequential F S E Q which I am showing on the slide and a portion which is parallelized. So, I can make it into a parallel uh, part and another a sequential part. Okay, so, if I uh, take execution time, we can divide a program into two parts. One is the sequential fraction and then one is a parallel fraction. The fraction that can be parallelized is F bar and the fraction which cannot be is called F sequential. Okay. So, this is the portion which we can make into parallel that is we can uh, employ multiple cores to make this portion fast. Now, how fast can we make this? By adding more and more cores. So, I will just uh, quickly show you a pictorial representation. Here we have uh, the light color the sequential and then we have a significant portion which can be parallelized. On a single core machine where n is equal to 1, it is going to take this long execution time. If we replace that with another core, go from a single core to a dual core system, the parallel portion can be scheduled on two different cores and hence it halves uh, the execution time. 
so it, the dark orange portion reduces to half. If I go from n equal to 2 to n equal to 4 it reduces further to n equal to 8 it reduces further. But if you see with n equal to 8 cores the orange portion is much smaller than the sequential. So essentially the sequential portion then starts to dominate the parallel one if you add more and more cores. So there is a limit to how much speed up I can achieve that is even if I keep on adding n equal to 8 or more the sequential portion is not going to go away and it is going to limit the performance right. So if I uh, derive this as a formula we will go to the speed up formula and try to derive a similar conclusion okay. So here uh, speed up of speed up on n cores is execution time on a single core divided by execution time on a n core system. Okay. What is T1? T1 is the time taken for the sequential fraction F S E Q plus the time taken by the fraction which can be parallelized that is time taken on the f par segment all right for t n how would this value be the f sequential time remains same and what happens to the parallelizable fraction now this will get divided by n okay so this portion will get divided by n then if we go back and substitute these values in the speed up, so the speed up on n cores, so I am not using the time uh, t as a variable, we will just talk in terms of fractions. So if a single core takes uh, one uh, unit, then the multi core is going to take f seq amount of time for the sequential and uh, time for the parallelizable portion is going to be f par divided by n okay. So, if I take uh, one unit of time on a sequential uh, on a unicore system, so numerator becomes 1 and in the denominator we have f sequential fraction of the sequential portion plus the parallelizable fraction gets divided by n okay. Solving this little further we will replace so, what is this uh, f s e q in terms of f par? So, this is 1 minus the parallelizing factor. I will just rewrite this. So, this becomes 1 minus f parallel, parallelizable fraction plus f par by n. Okay. All right. So, the speed up achieved by uh, multi core is 1 over 1 minus f par plus f par divided by n. Okay. If I ask you what is the max speed up we are achieving? What is the max speed up I can achieve uh, in an n core system? How will you get that? By increasing the number of cores, right? You are going to increase the number of cores further and further, and how do I derive this? So, to derive this the SPN equation is with you, you simply have to take a limit of this equation as you increase the number of cores. So, you have to take a limit as n tends to infinity. So, I will take SP of n because I want to find out the max speed up. So, the max speed up is that equation which is in the blue color and limit it as n tends to infinity. n tends to infinity of s p n. So, this is s p max is limit as n tends to infinity of uh, s p n and if I go back to this blue formula here there is only one n if I limit this n tending towards infinity what value will you get? This term becomes 0. So, it becomes 1 over f 1 minus f par and what is 1 minus f par? It is 1 over f sequential because we had replaced f sequential with 1 minus f parallel. Okay. 
So, this maximum speed up we can achieve is 1 divided by f sequential. Okay, so, the same formula is written on this slide here. Right? So, the maximum possible speed up is limited by the portion which cannot be parallelized that is the f sequential. The sequential fraction is going to limit the amount of speed up you are able to get uh, which was also visible in this uh, pictorial representation. The uh, orange portion was getting smaller and smaller but the uh, light orange portion remained the same and that is what which uh, limited the maximum speed up. Okay, so, that was Amdahl's law and what do the uh, what do we learn from this? What are the lessons from Amdahl's law? One is uh, you propose innovations as an engineer, you are going to propose enhancements to the designs, but any enhancement you propose, how much effect will it have on the final product? Will it really give you the speed up you expect? Will all depend on how much portion of the execution time this enhancement is going to contribute. If it is going to contribute a major portion, yes, you are going to get a required amount of speed up. But if it is not, then you cannot expect significant changes in the original and the new enhanced system. So, the lesson is you have to always optimize on the common case. Do not come up with a very complex arithmetic or an adder unit or a floating point unit which is not going to be used every time. If you are going to use a small uh, ALU every time try to optimize this ALU rather than work on a very complicated pipeline new design which you are going to use only some amount of time. Okay? So, concentrate on the common case, make the major portion uh, of the execution time as parallel as possible, make sure that your enhancement is contributing to a major portion. All right. And in the um, example of multi cores, we saw that we were adding more and more cores. So, uh, it was improving the performance, but how much? So, uh, how do I know where to stop? Because everything has a limit. So, Amdahl's law has uh, uh, says that we have a law of diminishing returns because any enhancement you propose, it is going to um, need more resources. right? So, you design a new hardware, um, it will require control logic, more data structures, extra storage registers. So, additional resources are to be reserved for this enhancement. Adding more cores will give you some uh, speed up initially. But if you keep on adding more and more cores, the program is going to uh, divide the task across the several cores which are available, but it would uh, happen at some point of time that every core has got a very little amount of work to do, but they spend most of their time communicating with each other. So, we are not doing effective work, but this because this communication is not part of the program, it is done because we divided the task across multiple cores. Hence, we should know where to stop an enhancement that is how many cores to add to solve a particular problem. Okay. Then the speed up uh, can be uh, defined in different manners. For example, we talk of speed up of a given algorithm or uh, unicore versus multicore. I can say that how much does my bubble sort algorithm take on a single core machine versus a multicore machine. However, if you uh, want to do it in a better way, it is nicer to do speed up with respect to an application and not an algorithm. That is I would say I want to speed up my sorting algorithm or sorting as an application and not want to uh, speed up a particular sorting algorithm. Right? So, sorting can be done either by a quick sort or bubble sort. So, depending on the machines you have or the resources you have, you can choose a particular or better algorithm suiting to the hardware setup and not only keep trying to improve a particular given uh, algorithm. Okay, so, application level speed up would mean that uh, the amount of work done will be definitely different on a single machine as well as a parallel machine and hence it is always good to also think of having better algorithms when you move from a unicore to a multicore system. Next, we are going to look at uh, Gustafson's law. So, here I will go back to the Amdahl speed up. So, what was the max speed up given by Amdahl if you remember the max speed up on a n core system was 1 over f sequential right. So, the sequential fraction was there. 
and we could divide the execution time into two parts s small s for sequential portion and small p for the parallel portion ok. So, this was the setup when we discussed Amdahl's law, but Gustafsson observed that this parallel portion uh, although it is not linked to the max speed up, but the p small p this uh, parallelizing portion when I move from a single core to a multi core system. I can exploit the multiple cores to do this p faster. In other words, I could do multiple such p's right. So, we could extend the problems domain for handling larger data sets because s is similar or would remain almost similar, but I am able to parallelize the p. So, why not extend the parallelizable portion? So, that is the proposal which uh, Gustafsson uh, proposed and uh, he said that how do I use the capability of a multi core by giving it more and more work. If you recall the GPUs had so many cores, so we were uh, supposed to give lots of work to utilize those arithmetic units. So, similarly this parallelizable portion which is running on a multi core, I am supposed to give it more work, solve larger problems, solve more complex problems, use it for bigger data sets. So, effectively what is going to happen? The f power is going to increase ok. So, f sequential yes it is uh, limiting the performance according to Amdahl's law. So, the max speed up is this, but if I am increasing f power uh, very much I would get good performance. And therefore, here the added value will not come from the speed up, but it will come from the added functionality ok. So, we will work it out to understand how, how right. So, we will do some calculations. So, here uh, we had divided the execution time on a unicore, I will use some new terminologies to explain this concept. So, I am instead of using T1, I am using T uni to say that this is the execution time on a unicore system which is simply the sequential portion plus the parallel portion. It is going to take both these times. When we go from a unicore to n processors that is n core system, what do we get? T execution on multi core. How much would this be? It will be s which remains same. This p parallelizable portion gets divided by n because I have n cores ok. So, this is uh, how I would compute the execution time on a multi core. But suppose I say that let the t uni be equal to t multi ok. So, if I say t multi core if I want this to be equal to the uni core then what would happen? So, this is going to be equal to s plus p, but this is on a larger problem. So, this is for a larger workload. So, when my workload increases, the multi core is able to exploit that by uh, dividing the work across n cores, but the uni core would not be able to do this, and hence, uh, if I am running a larger workload the t unicore on a larger workload. So, I will call it a new ok. I am just using the suffix new to say that I am running this on a larger workload. So, how much would that be? It will be s plus now this p would become n p because n multiplied by p because the multi core was able to do this p in time unit p by dividing it across n cores, but if I have larger workloads for larger workloads the sequential uh, system that is the unicore would take n times p amount of time to do the same work ok. So, I hope it is clear unicore was assuming s plus p, multi core was able to do this p faster by dividing it across uh, n uh, cores and if we move the concept to handle larger workloads, we say that my p is now working on huge amount of data which can be sent across n cores. So, multi core is able to do it at s plus p time, but the same p because it is very large 
distributed across n systems when it comes to a new unicore setup my new unicore time will become s plus n times p okay so now let us uh, do the speed up calculation this was the time uh, execution time so what is the speed up speed up on the new unicore now we are moving the setup from uh, a simple data set to a larger data set so time on the unicore but the new one which is working on large data divided by time on the multi core okay so how much is this on the new unicore to do the large p I'm going to take n uh, time units, whereas the multi-core is going to take some p time units because this p is very large. Multi-core distributes it, and in the numerator, the unicore is not able to distribute it. Hence, it becomes s plus uh, p n. Okay, so that's the speed up achieved on a n core multi-core system. Okay, fine. So now uh, we'll look at the fractions. So the fractions which can be parallelized in this program. How much is that? P is the amount of uh, fraction which can be done in parallel and the complete fraction or the complete thing is S plus P. So from this I will derive the equation for S which is sequential and then substitute it there. So solving this uh, for S, so we have S plus P is P over F bar and therefore S is equal to P over F bar minus P. Okay, so that becomes P minus P into fraction which can be parallelized divided by f bar and finally and take the p common 1 minus f bar divided by f bar got it so we have uh, solved for the small s this small s and we are going to replace it here in this equation okay so that i'll do on the next slide okay so some uh, similar information is there here which i explained on the previous slide now we'll continue the calculations and the objective of this calculation is to show that gustafson's law helps us to achieve a linear speed up with respect to the number of cores okay uh, I'll just flash the previous slide to show you the speed up formula. Uh, we had stopped here. The red one is showing the speed up s plus p n divided by s plus p and the green one at the bottom is showing the value of s. So we are going to replace the value of s in the, the green s in the red one at the top. Okay. Speed up s p was small s plus n processors the parallelizable portion divided by s plus p okay and then the small s the sequential portion was p into 1 minus f bar divided by f bar okay this we saw in the previous slide we've derived this now we'll derive this speed up using the value of small s so because it's a bigger term i'll do uh, both the parts separately i'll do the numerator first so i'll do the sp's numerator so numerator is small s plus n into p so small s is this value so we'll take that p into 1 minus f bar divided by f bar that is the fraction which is parallelizable plus n into p i can take p common and then solve it a little and you get 1 minus f bar 
plus n times f bar whole divided by f bar okay so you get this this is the numerator now let us solve for the denominator to so speed up denominator so what is the denominator it was s plus p now let us substitute the value of s p into 1 minus f bar divide by f bar plus small p okay so if we solve this what you will get is if we take p common we get 1 minus f bar plus f bar divided by f bar all right so we've uh, solved the numerator and the denominator now let us uh, join the results so the final sp is the numerator divided by the denominator so this is the numerator here this value uh, so i will say this is v1 is the first expression and v2 is the second expression so we want to do v1 over v2 if you do this uh, the p cancels out the f bar cancels out okay so let me uh, write it here so if you work it out for yourself on a notebook just solve it and what you will get at the end is 1 minus f bar plus n times f bar okay because this v2 if you look at v2 it remains uh, actually i'll just uh, reduce that further what is v2 v2 is actually p into because the f bar cancels out it is p into uh, 1 over f bar because the f bar cancels you get this Okay, so v2 is uh, p over f bar and then if you do v1 over v2 what you get is there in this uh, green color and observing this green equation what do you conclude what is the speed up on n processes you can see it is now linear with respect to the number of cores okay so if we add more and more cores we are going to get uh, better and better speed up all right so the same uh, formula are given again uh, here in a neater manner so amdahl's law gave us better speed up only if the f bar reached around 90 and more so beyond 90 percent parallelizable portion amdahl's law gave us good speed up but gustafson's law says that more and more cores will give you a linear speed up because we can do more work on these n cores i can assign better workloads parallelizable workloads and use these n uh, processes thus the multi core architectures which we plan to design and which do exist will be indeed useful to us all right so to summarize uh, this we have looked at amdahl's law which said that uh, the speed up you can achieve is limited by the fraction which you cannot parallelize and we eventually start getting diminishing returns even if we add more cores or extend the functionality the sequential portion will start dominating after a while so the max speed up is limited by fraction which is sequential which cannot be parallelized okay so uh, of course we should try to use applications and algorithms which suit the given al uh, given architecture so for unicores one algorithm could be good but you can design a newer algorithm when you move to a multi core system and gustafson's law said that um, we can have scalable designs with multi core have a parallel portion which can be divided across multiple things have larger uh, data sets work on complex problems and hence uh, if we exploit this concept you will get a speed up which is linear with the number of cores which we can add and this is a good news for us because this says that multi cores will indeed be useful to the community thank you mm -hmm.